Did you know that Charles Fox Parham copied a cult leader and implemented many of that cult leader's practices into his own ministry? We're going to be taking a look at Parham's involvement with the Shiloh cult on this episode. You're not going to want to miss it. Charles Fox Parham, the founder of Pentecostalism, is made out by many modern-day charismatic leaders to be a great man of God, mightily used to bring about the restoration of the apostolic faith. What they don't like to mention, however, is Parham's fraudulent activities, his false prophecies, or the murders that are associated with his name. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at Parham's folly that led to the ruin and even the death of some of his followers. The year was 1901. The place was Stone's Folly, a 30-room mansion that Charles Fox Parham was using as his Bethel Bible College. Parham had recently asked his students to find the connection between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and evidence that one had received the baptism. Prior to leaving on a three-day assignment, he told his students to review Acts chapter 2 and see if they could find the connection there. When Parham returned, his students were all in agreement that the evidence to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit was speaking in tongues. Then, on New Year's Day 1901 at 11 p.m., one of Parham's students by the name of Agnes Osmond asked Parham to pray and lay hands on her so that she would receive the gift of tongues. Parham did, and she allegedly received the gift speaking in what was supposed to be Chinese. The other students reported that During the incident, a halo surrounded her face and her head. It's also reported that for three days, Osman could only speak and write in the Chinese language. And it wasn't long before Parham and the rest of his 40 students were all speaking in tongues. But Bethel Bible School did not originate in the mind of Parham. It was a copy of a school he had recently attended at Shiloh, a commune in Maine run by a cult leader by the name of Frank Sanford. The name of Sanford School was the Holy Ghost in Us Bible School. Parham took some of the same ideas from Sanford's teachings along with the structure of Sanford School and implemented them into his own ministry. Frank Sanford was a former Free Will Baptist preacher in New Hampshire. He left the pulpit and decided to start a commune in Durham, Maine because of a vision that he allegedly received from God. One day, as he was walking through the woods on his way to the morning session of an A.B. Simpson conference, he heard one word, and that word was Armageddon. Not only did he hear the word, but he saw the word descending from the clouds and down into the trees. It wasn't long before he heard another word from God. The word this time was, go. Sanford took this to mean that God wanted him to leave his pastorate in order to start a new work. And this led to the building of Shiloh in 1896, a commune that at one time housed more than 600 residents. But Frank Sanford was an insane tyrant. He starved his people, worked them to exhaustion, and demanded absolute obedience. To obey Sanford was to obey God himself. He also ordered his people to fast for days at a time. These fasts were not only for the adults, but Sanford commanded all his residents to fast, including young children and infants. One person who left Shiloh described it this way. One thing was the way the children were treated. I couldn't see a participle of love or mercy shown for the children or anyone else. And when they had a fast, the babies fasted, all the babies, a day and a night and a part of another day. The baby room was right over us, and the crying of the babies was enough to affect the most hard-hearted person living. The insanity of Sanford caused the death of several of his followers, including a young boy of 14 by the name of Leander Bartlett. Bartlett had become sick, and yet was commanded to fast. Since Sanford, like Dowie, believed that only the prayer of faith was to be used to heal the sick, no doctor was called for the boy. Ironically. Bartlett was even denied prayer since he had been disobedient and needed chastisement. Sanford's insanity led him to believe that he was the new reincarnation of the prophet Elijah and that his assistant, C.E. Holland, was the new Moses. As a matter of fact, Sanford and John Alexander Dowie would have regular arguments 
as to who was the real Elijah. Sanford also believed that he was the reincarnation of King David. He also predicted the world would end in September of 1909, even down to the exact time. This is the man that Charles Fox Parham copied. Parham not only visited Shiloh, but worked directly with Frank Sanford. We're now going to take a look at an article that not only shows the destructive nature of Frank Sanford, but mentions Parham's work with Sanford. The article is called Driven Insane. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are once again over at newspapers.com. And we're looking at an article from the Topeka State Journal, Topeka, Kansas, September 11th, 1900. You can see the date right here. The name of the article is Driven Insane. And this is the story of Lizzie Bell. This is a picture of Lizzie here. Lizzie Bell was a student that accompanied Charles Fox Parham and 60 other students to Frank Sanford's Shiloh Cult. I want to show you that Parham was there. And this is the end of the article right here, this little paragraph. It says, C.F. Parham, the pastor at the Divine Healing Mission in this city, went to Shiloh with Sanford in June and acted as a teacher for six weeks. He returned to Topeka two weeks ago. So Parham was at Shiloh, and he actually taught at Shiloh. Now, I want to scoot over here and just show you a little portion, okay? And of, of another article that mentions the same thing, but this time it's a year later. It's in 1901. It's from the same um, newspaper, but it's January 7th, 1901, just a few short days after Parham allegedly laid his hands on Agnes Osmond, who asked him to pray that she would receive the gift of tongues, and she received it, supposedly. And uh, so did he and all his other students. Uh, his 40 other students. Um, but this, this little part portion of this article actually shows that uh, Parham implemented some of the practices of Frank Sanford. And this is what it says. After returning from Shiloh, Maine, Mr. Parham shortly after started the Bible school in his, or in this city, which is conducted on the lines laid down by the larger school at Shiloh. And that is talking about Frank Sanford's Holy Ghost and Us Bible School. So Parham copied Frank Sanford. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share it with someone who you think may benefit from it.